<laughs> Hello and welcome back to the channel. Alright, so I get asked pretty regularly what's the best motor from the Sierra. Constantly the same question. And it's constantly the same answer. It's G16B. It's easy. I've gone over it before actually, so I'm not going to bother. What I'm going to do today, we're going to do an end-to-end, -end, start to finish G16B spot. So, a lot of people are nervous about doing this kind of stuff, and I understand that. So, I've tried to get as much detail as I can in the footage, try and get as much detail as I can for you guys. Um, I already have a video up which is a basic, really simple how to wire. Um, I'll add a link to that about here somewhere. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Alright, this is the donor car for this swap, it's a factory 1.3 normal base Sierra, uh, I think this one's a Holden Drover, same thing, different smell. Alright, so for the swap to go easily, you really have to start with a 1.3 car. I've converted one litre cars as well, and as long as they're a Type 3, which is the right model, look that up if you're wondering, it's all pretty simple. But for the purpose of this video, we're literally just going to be going for the 1.3. So the first step start with obviously you need to pull out your motor pretty simple I won't bother going into too much details with that one um, but do keep in mind you do need some bits off this motor so let's get that out first Alright, first thing, pull the clutch off, throw the clutch in the bin, always put a new one on. If you only have to pull it apart, put a new bloody clutch on it. Next one, you need to pull the flywheel off, check your surface, also check your ring gear, that'll become very relevant at the end of this video. Alright, so motor's out, uh, I've still got a few bits, copper, uh, coil. Uh, stuff to remove, then I can fit up the adapter kit. Um, the owner wants to give it a good clean while it's out, which makes sense. It's a very pretty car. Here we have the new motor. So, it's G16B from a Coil Pack Bellino. Um, Locos. Jace actually drove the car around for a while before he pulled it out, so we know it's good okay. And this for reference, this is our old 1300. Just looks like that. This one's got a Weber carby on it. Mechanical secondaries with like some fancy adapter hat thing. Yeah, never been a fan of these. I played around with them a lot when I was a kid, bit of an idiot. This car already had triple core radiator and brand new viscous fan, these extractors. Something that is important is to have the right start motor. This is the new one for the car. This is your 300 one. Clearly, see the difference. They're fat ass. Now, you can make these ones work. I've done it many times. You flat wheel it. So what you do, they rub just here. Obviously on the 1600, but same deal. Um, so what you do is what I do. Grab some marking out paint and literally spray the side of the block. So bright pink or whatever. Try and fit the starter. And you'll see where the rub mark, where the pink marks will be on the starter. Pull it out, put it in the vise and flat wheel away and you'll be shocked how much you have to take off but you can do it i've run those for years um as i said this is a thin body vitara starter you can buy them off ebay but bosch genuine bosch ones cheap as chips um it's really not worth grinding them down but in a pinch you can do it yeah they're only about a hundred bucks or something like that anyway so yeah that's the difference in your starters and that's the reason you need it because when the different block the actual vitara blocks for G16B blocks further out here. That's all there is to it. Alright, moving on. Order that from Suzuki. That part number. They're literally like 22 bucks off the shelf, by the way. Yeah. Sorry. You need your fire one, you go. I like this thing as you go. And ready? Yep. 
breathe. And that's probably the first time this has seen daylight since it left the factory. Alright, so this is where you obviously your old pickup come from. This is a new one, as in brand new. So, as you can see, where it picks up in here, the G16 block's bigger. It's not a nice fit, and there's no threaded hole there. Now, one option, I've seen these drilled and tapped. It seems like a lot of fucking around for something that is actually a pretty vital part of the engine. And up here, obviously too big, problem is, because you could, that's a big enough flange there, easily to use as a flange to silicon it. They haven't welded it the whole way around. Stupid. So, what we do, we cut this off about here-ish. We cut off the same one on the other one. Plonk that in, plonk that in, cover all this up. Tack, tack, tack. And then we'll make up a new leg to pick up off this bolt. And I'll give you a hint, this bolt is a prick to do up but you do it never kind of thing it's a set and forget so it's not really a big deal um, what I might do we'll leave this leg on to hold the height and we'll do this end first let's do it It's okay, it's only a total of five down today. Alright, so I put a little slimy um, ultra black around the eggs there. It's just to guarantee the seal. Done. Alright, moving on to the sump. The owner of this car was nice enough to give me a brand new sump to cut up. Alright, you can see, fits down nice. And if you look over here, I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can see the oil pick up. We're right, we're in the ballpark. Alright, so. Let's get a talking about sumps. All right, there are a bunch of different G-Series Suzuki sumps. These are just the ones I have on hand for this, well, what I've got laying around. This is Sierra. So, I did have my large rear hump, quite shallow in here. This is Vitara, bigger sump. This is Bellino, completely wrong. Now, Bellino will come either with this cutout in here or with a flat front. Um, depending on if it's a core pack or not a model, you want the core pack one. So this is where it brings us to now. You can take any one of these sumps and bolt it to any G13, G16, AB, doesn't matter crap. You can take Sierra sump put it on a GDI motor. Um, as long as they're the same G series family, they're the same. So that's attention to you, Benny from Skid Factory. You were wrong. Um, so what you've got to do for this conversion, so obviously 
explain about a Sierra stamp. We cut, we cut, we cut, we cut. Same here. Then we put it on our dummy block, weld it in. Now they're the only lines that matter. Because you're going to cut it higher than this, the other one and you're going to be straight on the bottom. So let's get it off. That is now garbage. Even more than it was when it was in a bolino. And now we have the Sierra Colpac G6 10 base sump. Now, put it back on the car. For those wondering, these cars, these motors don't run gaskets from the factory. It's all silicon. And because this is a new, new sump, I can just stay in some gasket and we'll put it on. Let's do it. You see, this mount, mount sits square, there's a gap. The Bente kit comes with like two big washers. This comes with that. <laughs> These are the bolts of the 1.3. Now I just want to say I actually ended up using the adapter plate uh, for the bell housing and none of these mounts from the low range off-road kit. I'm seriously not a fan of them whatsoever, but I'll get to that. Uh, this is obviously the 1.3 mount. The two holes on this end line up nice, this one does not. So you actually got to round out pretty much all the holes to get the line up. Once you finish drilling those out, you literally bolt the mounts on. Alright, so what we're going to do now is the top radiator hose. So for this, you actually use the factory Bellino um, bottom hose, even, I believe, um, and shorten it up, as you see. So, this is a thing I made. I did it for my burnout car with the radiator hoses under the car. I needed some way to stop the hoses coming off. I've actually made the spring going this. They don't come off without a little nib on there. They're fine, but it's always better to do a little bit more. If you have the tools available.
Alright, now what I do with this, so what I tend to do is cut it off about halfway, crimp a chart and buzz it sharp with a MIG, works. Alright, so that when it's in the car, it's about there-ish. Then the factory S top radiator hose literally clamps on right there. It's very tight, but it's about perfect. And what I'm doing here is welding an M10 by 1mm nut with a recess behind it on it. Now your temp sender is not M10 by 1mm, but it is very, very close. And as you'll see, it winds in perfect and they don't leak. Um, it makes up for the fact there's no taper. So I recommend doing it that way. You can probably get a 1 8 BSP uh, weld in, probably be better, but yep. Alright, what I'm doing here is removing the standard studs out of the bottom of the gearbox. So what I'm doing is just winding two nuts on, driving one nut on with a nut gun, then driving the studs out. Nice and easy way to do it. Usually you go with vice grips, these ones were just exceptionally tight for some reason. All right, so the reason I don't particularly like this kit, so it's got that top on the gearbox thing there and these plates. It just when it's all in, it doesn't have the true. What's the right wording here? It doesn't look factory. And that's kind of important for this one. Well, it's kind of important for my conversions. I like when you pop the bonnet, look at it, go, oh, check that out, it looks kind of factory. But not, and you have to know what you're looking at to know it's not, if that makes any sense. Right, these bolts were obviously torqued up after the effect of filming, and then the clutch fitted up. I always use an Exceedy Pink Bits clutch, um, same one in all of them, just never have any issues with them, and they hold up to the power easily. Let's grab it good. See what I'm doing. I've never seen anyone clean the inside of a bell housing this thoroughly before. The last thing that's not showed is putting the studs in the back of the motor. Um, the Lowranger Fred studs were junk. They The thread wasn't finished very nicely on them. I actually had to drive them with a the rotor gun, so I'm not showing that because I was not happy with them whatsoever. <laughs> And the last thing, the adapter kit we bought, the engine mounts didn't work, so I actually had to make the driver's side. Now, for those who don't know, G16B driver's side engine mount is slightly different location to a 1300. The adapter kit you'll buy from Zook Parts will have the right, it'll just the right amount. It'll just all bolt in. Jason, stop painting things. <laughs> All right, with this swap, you need to use the Sierra viscous fan. Oh, well, sorry, depending on what model, but you want the viscous fan, preferably from a Vitara. If you don't have one, just go buy one off eBay. They're cheap enough. You do not need a thermo. You don't need everything else that comes along with it. Now, once you've got uh, the fan in, you put your shroud. You put your shroud on first. Slip the radiator in, then pull it all up. Now, if you kept everything as it should be the standard Sierra fan will fit this or sorry standard Sierra radiator all the standard bits will fit exactly where they should be and what I'm doing here is the alternator plug so the wiring colors for the plugs are exactly the same I always use a Bellino alternator I would never put a Falcon alternator on a Sierra again they are junk and too big 65 amp is pretty much all you're ever going to need in a Sierra. They don't really have that much at draws. 
Um, the Bolina ones work pretty well. Um, I've never really had them fail. I actually even have one on my burnout card because it was just what I had laying around. So all you do is just solder the wires in, heat shrink it over, clip it in. Easy done. In this case, I had to run a new power feed wire because someone had butchered that in the past, but that was as simple as a power feed wire from the power terminal through a fusible link to the battery. And wiring. Okay, so the wiring in this one was sim was a bought kit from Cam's Wiring. Um, so I'm not even going to touch on it. It's easy as it was like three wires to run. If you're not into wiring or doing it yourself, give Cam a hit up Cam. He um he did this one. It's pretty nice. Um, if you want to do it yourself, I've got another video that shows you the really easy, easy peasy way to do it. Alright, a little bit out of order here, but what I'm doing here is putting the power steering pump on. Basically, the mounts are slightly different on the G16B, so just had to round out the holes a tiny bit and bump it forward a little bit. Easy as. So yeah, remember that uh, brand new genuine Bosch starter motor? Yeah, it turns out it just doesn't throw in with any force. From this point I pulled the gearbox out, put a new ring gear on it, put it all back together and it was exactly the same. So that's off for warranty. Um, for a temporary fix just to get the car, get ready to get exhaust and all that kind of stuff, we ended up getting, as I mentioned in the starter video, a spare 1300 starter I had laying around, ground the crap out of the side of it. And for now, it's working. Um, we will replace it with the proper starter for it. But just shows, no matter how you do things and how much time or effort you spend on it, it can still bite you in the ass. All right. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Go again. is the throttle cable so you use the factory Bellino throttle cable you hook it up to the throttle body as it does and then trim the outer to the right length um, pull the, there's a little rubber bit that goes through the firewall for the Sierra cable put that on the Bellino outer and then run the inner through the cable through the firewall and this is where you are here now in the top there that's just an M6 bolt that goes through where the standard um, nib goes in tighten it up and your throttle cable is done easy as that you can see it in the uncase of. Gotta make sure that's exactly there. cable done and that brings us to the end of our video thank you so much for all well, anyone who's watched this and hopefully this has actually helped some people um, I have skipped a bunch of little stuff but to be honest if you're at the point where you do an engine conversion you should be able to do this little stuff as it is um, and if you need any help or anything with that just comment down below and I will reply back to you or try to get back to you as soon as I can uh, that's for all now thanks for sticking around for the 25 minutes this video was I assure you it took a lot longer to make cheers guys oh,